Smarasmarare. Oh, remember, just always remember all these names of the, of the Vaishnavas. Just by hearing their names, we become purified. The seven secrets of highly successful book distributors. As we, uh, Gala mentioned, you can't distribute what you don't have yourself. So our main technique for preaching is to dive deep within the process of Krishna consciousness and to have our own personal experience of getting a taste for the holy name and for loving relationships with the devotees. Now, this list I compiled myself, so this is just my personal observation and opinion, and it can probably be compiled in many other different ways, but uh, this is how I see it, so that's what you're going to get. Seven secrets. <clears throat> Cultivate your desire, number one, because everything's based on desire. And where there's a will, there's a way. If you, had, if you desire to do something strongly enough, then you'll, you'll figure out how to do it, like Prabhupada begged passage on a steamship and uh, came to America. That was a very innovative thing to do. But he had, his will was so strong that nothing could stop him. So if we want to be successful at book distribution and developing this team, then we, we simply have to have a strong desire. There will be obstacles. When you go on Sankirtan, you will meet many obstacles. But when we have a strong will, we don't see those obstacles as uh, stumbling blocks, but we simply see them as opportunities for a new innovation. And Krishna is showing us a new opportunity to uh, go around those obstacles and perhaps learn something new. Uh, B is to stay hungry and humble. As soon as we lose our humility and start thinking, oh, I know everything, or I can't improve my service, then we... Uh, become non-productive. But as we are speaking about this, the, uh, what is our motto? Who can remember? I should have put that on the quiz. I remind you there's going to be a quiz today at the end. It's pretty gnarly too, so get ready. What was it? Gayla had it. The more you show, the more you sell. The more you show, the more you sell. What was my question? What was our motto? Oh, our motto. Yeah, that's one of our mottos. Very good. Yes. Always better service, ABS. Always better service, because you can always refine your service. You can always make it better. So if you're hungry to always make it better, like if you go to a Bhagavatam class and you're really doing active listening and you're doing everything you can to absorb what's there, you'll get much more out of it than someone who's falling asleep, for instance, in, in a class, you know, who's not hungry to hear that. Sometimes you can walk out of a, a good class and everyone's walking around in the hallway, that was a great class. Yeah? What did he or she say? So I don't remember. I just know it was really good. <laughs> that, can, that can happen. So try to, try to uh, you know, stay hungry and humble. Be, be humble because we're not the doers. C. Associate with devotees who have strong faith in the holy name and desire to give Krishna to others. We're made by our association because we're tiny. And even a moment's association with somebody who's very inspired, we can get inspired, even a moment. I mean, even if you just see somebody, a look in someone's eyes, uh, Diane Underprabhu in New York City, uh, who is uh, an old Sankirtan man and also a resident of this temple. His picture's here in front of the temple in, in many of these uh, photos. He was telling me how when he was in Los Angeles years ago, in the early days, there was a brahmachari named Rameshwar and he was so into book distribution he said, Dainanda said one day he was standing in the doorway talking to some of the Sankirtan men in the Sankirtan room sort of and uh, Dainanda Prabhu said he, he was blocking the way and he was sort of chatting, pontificating and this uh, brahmachari Rameshwar he had a box of books and he was coming in and, and he was in so much of a enthusiastic nature and hurry that he sort of pushed him out, Dayananda out of the way, you know, in his doing his service, you know, to get through the doorway and such. 
And Dayananda said, just in that one moment, seeing him carrying the box of books and in so much in a hurry to do his service and so on, he became inspired and thought, well, oh, this is more the mood of Sankirtan and I'm blocking the way. It, and just in a second, you can become ins inspired by good association. And similarly, if, if we associate with um, somebody who's critical or a, a victim or making excuses all the time, then we'll pick up those habits too. So cultivate good association. And D is that your ability will grow to meet your strong desire. So if you have a strong desire and you don't exactly know how to do something, your ability will grow to meet that strong desire. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. In the early days of book distribution, devotees didn't know how to distribute books because no one had ever done it before. I mean, no one had ever really innovated and tried different ways of book distribution. But nonetheless, there were warehouses full of books and Srila Prabhupada had asked the devotees to distribute the books. So some devotees became inspired to go out and try and there, there was a, a, a group of devotees particularly headed by uh, Budi Manta in San Francisco and they took some books out with them one day and they were thinking how to distribute them and they stopped to get gas at the gas station and the man came over and filled their they used to be full serve back then, back in the old days. And he filled it up with gas, and then when he came for the payment, Budi said, well, give me a Krishna book. And he handed him a Krishna book and said, here, how about this? <laughs> this is, look at this beautiful book. You, you see all the pictures and everything? This is about Krishna. And the man liked it. And he said, okay, it's a deal. Can you have the gas? I'll take the book. And then they became inspired. But they didn't know they were going to go to a gas station and distribute a book. They just knew we're going to distribute a book somehow or other. And their, their ability grew to meet their strong desire. So this cultivating of desire is very powerful. And it comes from within. Enthusiasm actually means, you know, the inspiration you get from God within your heart. So we should cultivate that in order to perfect our service. Any questions? Comments? Okay. Number two, practice. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. If you don't practice, you don't progress, right? Music, you have to practice. You get the band back together. You must practice. You must practice. So, I wrote down here this cultivate discipline. Key word, discipline. If you can take this one thing, discipline, and apply it to your life, then all kinds of good things can happen. One definition here of discipline is conscious control over your lifestyle. You know, make plans. For instance, you know, if you want to make chanting japa the center point of your day, then plan ahead. Make a conscious choice and a conscious lifestyle change to make japa the center of your life. For instance, uh, I live in a house in California, and in the evening time before I take rest, I set up all the paraphernalia for the deities and I also have a, a sitting place where I chant my japa and I set out everything the night before where I have my the books that I'm going to read in the morning and my japa bag is right there sitting on top and everything's sort of laid out in order and so when I wake up in the morning the first thing I, my mind goes to is that it, there's that seat and there's the books everything's ready to go it's a conscious plan so we should plan ahead, plan to uh, dis you know, stay disciplined in, in our practice. And then also to think and keep this mentality that nothing will change until I do. It's easy in it, when we're in a big community, in a temple, to think, uh, why don't those guys do something? Why doesn't somebody pick up that you know, trash there? So why don't you pick it up? Uh, why doesn't the GBC do this? Why doesn't the temple president? How come Nityananda Prabhu is not on this? How come you're not on it? <laughs> this is what I should always ask myself. Why don't you do something? You change it. If you want it to be different, change it. You know, become that thing that you want. And just, it, it, it's very empowering. The next thing is one of my favorites. And it's on the quiz. So pay attention. Failure is the pillar to success. In fact, Prabhupada mentions this in the Light of the Bhagavat, that beautiful, beautiful book that he wrote for a conference that he was inv invited to in Japan that he never went to. 
But later on, Tamal Krishna Maharaj organized the printing of that in Hong Kong. And, uh, and now it's available. It's a beautiful book to distribute. Who, who distributes that book, Light of the Bhagavad? Who would like to, a, a shot at distributing Light of the Bhagavad? All right. See, there's strong desire. You will get it. Now that you've raised your hand, you've made it your, your desire known, it will be fulfilled. You will have Light of the Bhagavads as many as you like to distribute. So, this uh, failure is a pillar of success. Prophet mentions in Light of the Bhagavad that oftentimes the things we go through in our life that we think are stumbling blocks, that we think are setbacks, are not setbacks at all. Actually, they're the pillars to our success. In our lifetime, oftentimes we think, oh, I've, you know, I've taken a misstep in my devotional service. But actually, later on, we'll be able to see how that helped us. Made us humble, made us look at, it, at life from a different angle, made us hungrier to, to practice our devotional service, and so on. Uh, so, failure is the pillar of success. And, and really, if we're moving ahead, we're going to experience things that we think are setbacks. But don't be dissuaded, just keep moving ahead. Look at uh, the life, uh, life of Prabhupada, how many setbacks he had. Had the whole Bhagavad Gita written and then it, it got stolen. Or it was traded away for some tea biscuits or something. That's, that's the story I've heard. And then his typewriter was stolen. That's only, it's like nowadays having your laptop disappear. Uh, you know, so he had so many setbacks, setbacks somebody uh, attacked him, according to the history, when he was living in uh, one apartment, some crazy person uh, attacked him and he had to move in with Mukund Mukunda. So, uh, you know, these setbacks will come, but we should see them as uh, opportunities just to move ahead. All right, practice makes perfect. So, you know, this is the same idea, only on the positive side, but just practice. Whatever you're going to do, practice it, and you have to practice a lot. When, you, when you're going, we learned this little uh, routine yesterday of how to present a Bhagavad Gita. Get as many reps in as you can, presenting that. And after a while, it'll feel like breathing, right, Mother Indra Nilamani? It just, it just comes out of you. You don't think about it. It's like driving a car, driving a stick shift or something. You just drive. You don't think you're backing out of the driveway. Now I push in the clutch, you know, I go out. After a while, when you present a book, it just becomes second nature because you've done it so many times. So in the beginning, though, you're going to go out and you go, oh, what was I supposed to say? And the guy's halfway down the street. And you go, darn, you know. Okay, get up and try it again. And then try it again and try it again and try it again. And every time you fail, you're actually getting ahead. I failed so many hundreds of times and I was watching other devotees do it right and then I get to get it right the next time. But every time I did something wrong when I was on, you know, distributing a book, I'd remember it stick in my mind. I go, I'm never saying that again. <laughs> and then I, you know, next time I'd be ready for him. And it's like, gain, it's like Arjuna, you know, Arjuna, when he went out to uh, get this gold and things to bring back for the Rajasuya sacrifice and he was traveling all over. He fought with Shiva in the form of a um, mendicant and he gave him this Pashupata weapon and elsewhere he got other weapons and pretty soon he came back armed to the teeth with all these mantra weapons and everything. So we get like that too when we go out and fight the fight and you know pay your dues. Go out there and, and do the yagya and after a while you'll you'll start getting all these uh, new weapons that you can use on Sankirtan. Emulate successful preachers and book distributors. So one of the fastest ways to uh, become proficient at distributing books is to watch somebody who already is driving the car without thinking. This is uh, unconscious competence, isn't it called that? Unconscious competence. Watch somebody who's already in that mode because there's a certain rhythm, there's a certain confidence that somebody has when they're good at something like that and you can pick that up by watching and then emulating what that person does. Okay, next one is to read mindfully. Capture and absorb what you read. Have some system of, of reading and one system, I have actually a, a whole presentation called a Be a Sage page by page and there are a lot of suggestions in there for reading, but I think one of my, my favorite suggestions for, for reading is to get a partner, a reading partner. Find a friend, devotee, who's also interested in reading, 
and get together on a regular basis to read the Bhagavad Gita or Chaitanya Charitamrita or the Bhagavatam and share some time and read. And then, you know, keep a notebook and write down, when you hear a, a really important point, something that really excites you, then write it down and, and keep these things. And, and also, when you're reading the books, look for things that you can use on Sankirtan. There's lots of little things in the books. When you read them, you say, oh, I could present that to somebody on Sankirtan. Like we used to say all the time, and sometimes I still do, when I present a book to people, I say, this book completely rejects all religious activities that are materially motivated, and it propounds the highest truth, which is reality distinguished from religion for the welfare of all. Uh, reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Srila Vyasadeva is sufficient in itself for God realization. As soon as one submissively hears the Bhagavatam, he becomes enlightened in the absolute truth. You just present one shloka from the Bhagavatam. And Prabhupada recommended that shloka, Krishna Swa the that Krishna, uh, the, just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, um, the Bhagavatam has arisen like the sun to give light to everyone in this age of Kali. So you can look for these things in the books to use when you're preaching on Sankirtan. Is that okay? Yes, tree. Two is good for study, Shanaka Pandit said. Good point. Nice. Yes. It does, yeah, that's a fact. We saw that in San Jose when a lot of brand new people started going out. Then immediately, they, the, the most frequent comment I heard was, I better read these books. Because people are asking me what's in them and I feel embarrassed that I haven't really read them all. So they started reading groups. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, share your realizations. You know, talk about it with others. Prabhupada recommended that we discuss thoroughly threadbare the philosophy. So have groups, uh, groups of devotees you can get together with and thoroughly talk about the philosophy and, and your realizations. Fortify yourself daily by associating with Srila Prabhupada in his books. Not just for the information that's in, for, in the books, but realize that we're actually associating with Prabhupada by reading his books and, and hearing from Prabhupada directly. A, a god brother of mine named uh, Rishab Dev uh, passed away a few years ago and he uh, told me before he passed away one of his realizations was that everyone should read Prabhupada's books just to get Prabhupada's association because it's one of the most unique experiences it is the most unique experience that one can have that association with Prabhupada through his books very intimate kind of association so associate with Prabhupada every day and one of my personal favorites I've added to the list is chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day Prabhupada recommended this many times. And he called this getting practiced automatically. Means if you have this on your schedule, that before I go to sleep every day, I chant one full chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Means you can just chant the Sanskrit all the way through if you want. Like seventh, seventh chapter, you know, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Maya Sakta, Mana Partha, Yogam Yunjan, Marashrayaha, Asamsrayam, Samagramam, Yatagya Sasi Tachrinu. And then you just go on. Take you seven minutes. And if you do it every day for a month, two months, depending on you know, how much you're paying attention and how, what your proclivity is for, for memorizing, you'll learn the whole chapter after a few months or six months. If you just do it every day. And just make that part of your repertoire. It's very powerful. Many benedictions will come into your life just from chanting one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. For those who do deity worship, did you know that in the Archana Padati it's recommended that to alleviate offenses for doing Seva Aparad, for doing Puja, you should chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day? Or the whole Vishnu Sahasranam Stotram. That takes a little while. Does anybody do this? Sri, do you do that? One chapter of Gita a day? Try it out. Who would like to try it out? Who will actually do it? Okay. Prabhupada said in uh, Hawaii, in the Hawaii temple, he, he recommended, sometimes he said, chant one chapter of Gita, sometimes he said one chapter of Bhagavatam. 
And Baba Charini told us that in Hawaii, when Prabhupada was there, he, asked the, he told the devotees, you should chant one chapter of Bhagavatam every day. He said, uh, who will do this? And all the devotees raised their hand. And he said, will you really do this? Who will really do this? And they raised their hand. And he asked one more time, and everyone raised their hand. And then she said, the most amazing thing was nobody did it. <laughs> he gave a benediction too. He said, anyone who chants one chapter of Bhagavatam a day will become a great pundit. He said, for one year, if you chant a chapter of Bhagavatam a day. So, and in other places, as I said, he said Gita. So, try it out. Yes. It depends on how much time you have. You know what I do is, I go to the, the Veda base, and I make a copy of the whole chapter. And then uh, I have it on a piece of paper that I can carry with me in my briefcase. And say I'm going to the bank and I'm waiting in line and everyone else is sitting there going, hurry up, come on, can't you get more tellers out here? And I'm going, take your time because I'm going to finish my Gita chapter. Yeah, Dharma, uh, sometimes I'll do the, just the Sanskrit all the way through and sometimes I'll do the Sanskrit and then I'll read the English all the way through. And a lot of times, say if you go to somebody's house for prasadam or something like that, just get in this thing of, hey, before we take prasad, let's chant our chapter or right after. And you just get in this thing where it's somewhere or another during the day, you find a time to chant your chapter. And if you're on the road traveling, it's easy because you're in the plane, you're in the car. Have your shlokas all with you. The shlokas you're working on and, and reading and that you're doing every single day. Like, make a vow. Say, I'm going to learn the 12th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita cold. I'll know every shloka in there. And then just make that your vow for the next uh, year, if that's what it takes. And just bring it with you everywhere you go. I have mine right here. I'll show you. I'll prove it. Look. These are my shlokes. You can look at some of these. They're all... I've had them for years, some of them. And on the back, too. I don't know if you can see this or not. But I make a little... Uh, I write down the date and where I was when I finished the chapter. These are the prayers to Prahlad uh, Maharaj's prayers to Lord Nishingadev. Here's... Divinity and Divine Service, oh, a perennial favorite. Look at this one. Here's from Prabhupada's favorite shlokas. You know the shloka book? Take it down to the copy shop and copy yourself out. You know, if you want to learn all the shlokas that Prabhupada used in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam, just make a photocopy of them. Keep them in your pocket and uh, carry it with you wherever you go. And you can make a little check mark every time you... you uh, do another chapter. You deserve it. Give yourself a pat on the back. Have a cookie. Nice. So do your chapters. Do your shlokes. These shlokes are powerful. These mantras will liberate you. And when you have them handy you know, and they're ready to go, you know, Prabhupada liked it when devotees learned these key shlokas. He didn't want us to run off to Sanskrit college or anything like that. He just wanted us to know how to preach expertly. And Prabhupada used shlokas when he preached because it backs it up. It's like a lawyer going in a courtroom. He doesn't go in there and say, Your Honor, I think this man should go free. Why do you think that? I just do. You know? No, he has to go in there and say, According to Brown versus Board of Education, 1942, you know, whatever year it was, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, this man should go free. This is my political, this is my, you know, legal theory. Oh, you're, you're an attorney. So you have, to, you have to do that in spiritual circles. You have, to, you have to bring the heat. And you have to, you know, know where these shlokas are. So, <clears throat> chant your chapter. Next one is, number four, chant the Maha Mantra with attention. Attention is everything. Because actually, if you, if you consider it who we are, what are we? We're little units of attention. That's all we are. We're not our bodies. We're where our attention is going. Purusha prakriti stohi bhunkte prakriti jangunan karanam gunasangosya sadasad yoni janmasu every good or bad thing that happens to us happens because of where we're placing our attention. If we're placing our attention within goodness, passion, or ignorance, that's where we're going to end up. In the soup of the three modes of material nature. But if we place our attention on the transcendental sound vibration of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, then we'll be with Krishna. 
and will be liberated. Mamcha yov yabicharena bhakti yogina sevate sagunan samatityaitam brahma bhuya yakalpate. By that service, that transcendental service, one rises above the modes of material nature. So, chanting with attention, think, nothing is more important than my 16 rounds. Not the telephone, not money, not the entire world is more important than my 16 rounds. B. Shraddha Shabde Vishwash Kahe Surida Nishchai Krishna Bhakti Koila Sarva Karma Krita Hoy means this is what faith is that my full attention is concentrated on my practice of Krishna Bhakti. Now, we have obligations and duties to our families and to our, you know, all kinds of work and, and other things that we may be doing to keep the body and soul together. But while we're doing that type of work, if we're thinking, I'm doing this work so that I can make some free time to do my rounds and to do my hearing and chanting, that work also it won't impede us. So there's no impediment to devotional service. But we should cultivate that mood that the most important thing is this Krishna Bhakti. Next, practice the three Ps. Posture, sit properly. You know, when you're gonna when you're gonna sit down to read Bhagavad Gita or chant, uh, don't treat it lightly. You know, it's it's a service to the Lord to sit in here and to worship His words by hearing them with attention. And when you're chanting the Maha Mantra, you know, sit up for it. Sit close. Upanishad. That word Upanishad it means to sit up close. It really means to sit with attention. You know, you're moving in. You want to hear this. You don't want to miss even one tiny bit. That's the mood. To sit properly. You may walk around, okay, but that's not the point. I'm not saying you have to sit there, you know, like a yogi. Although it's nice to try that. But uh, the point is that you should, you know, in your mind, you should sit up for this. Whatever it is, if you're chanting around, sit up for it. Sit close. Get every word. And if your mind's going away, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Shanaya Shanmaya, a Padramed, you know, wherever it goes, bring it back under the control of the self. Keep concentrating back on the mantra. Pronunciation. Don't develop bad habits and be open to changing your habits if you're doing, you know, Shnik Shnik Ram Ram kind of thing or Rum Rum Rum. It's not the name of God, it's a, you know, a, a intoxicant. <laughs> So, you know, be aware that, you know, you're pronouncing the, the name of the Lord as a service, you know. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Don't rush through. One bead is not more important than the other. That's not, you know, mindful chanting that I, I got to finish. If I'm thinking I got to finish, I'm not on the one bead I'm on now. So these last two recommendations, call out like a baby for its mother. We're helpless, actually. In any minute, you know, the power of my speaking can be taken away. Maybe some of you are hoping for that. <laughs> now, you know, any, anything can be taken away from us at any time. But we're helpless, so we should think like that. Also, think, this is my last breath. What's it going to be like at your last breath? One of these times, it's going to be your last breath. In fact, that's a line I use on Sankirtan. When I present the book and I tell people, this is a book on yoga. You've heard of yoga before, right? Have you? Yeah. Well, this is a very special kind of yoga. It's called bhakti or the yoga of gratitude. Have you ever noticed that when you have gratitude, you're always happy? But if you don't have gratitude, it doesn't matter how many material things you have, you're never satisfied. So similarly, it's just like we breathe air all the time, but we take it for granted. But if you're choking, and it's your last breath, or, you know, or you almost drown and you come out of the water, then you don't take air for granted. You're happy just to be able to breathe, right? So this book teaches that actually every second is precious, and that God's in our heart. Real happiness comes from within, from the gratitude we have. So I present like that. But we should feel like that when we chant. Hare Krishna, that, you know, this is, what is it going to be like? My la our whole life is about death. It sounds a little macabre, but actually, our life is about death. That's what the Bhagavatam's about. It's about Maharaj Prikit has seven days to live. And he wants to know what? What does he want to know? What am I supposed to do at the time of death? 
this type of meditation, Prabhupada recommends it, you should cry like a, a baby for its mother. You know, feel like that. And, you know, think, this breath I'm getting, this is by the grace of the Lord. In any minute, this could be my last. So practice for it. Ante Narayana Smriti. Practice for your last breath. Chant like that. Next one, take shelter of the transcendental sound. Keep the vibration going. This is our, another one of our mottos. Keep the vibration going. No matter where you are, what you're doing, keep the transcendental vibration going. And especially on Sankirtan. When you're going from one person to the next, from one place to the next, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Don't stop and think about, you know, what the signs are saying or how you're doing well or bad. Just concentrate on the Maha Mantra and call out to Krishna and remember, I'm not the doer. Remove all obstacles, this is B, by remembering Lord Chaitanya. Difficult things become easy when you remember Lord Chaitanya and vice versa. You got the shlok? Let's give you Nityananda under Ram a hand there. So he's paying attention. He's, he's collecting these things. He's getting the goods. Okay, number six, depend on Krishna for results. Be an instrument. One devotee in England wrote me and said, you know, I'm really scared to go on Sankirtan. I've never been out before. And I wrote him back and said, I know what you mean. I always feel like that too when I think I'm going to do it. But when I step back and say, I'm not doing this, Krishna is, then I'm not scared anymore. And I feel like I'm an instrument. I'm going to go out and, and you know, I'm going to go out there. That's what I'm going to do. I'll just get out there. And then if Krishna wants something to happen, I'll do my best. Yeah, and he appreciated it and he went out. And he, he said, I, I went out not as the doer, but as an instrument. And I wasn't afraid. And, and he did something. And he felt encouraged. So, this is true. Give up being the doer. Oh, listen to this one. This is on B here. I really like this. This is a, something I, I heard a while back. And it, it became a meditation of mine for the service that, that I've been doing. And... Um, it's really a powerful meditation. It's the one in parentheses. It's remarkable how much you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. Just think about that. Take that one home with you. If you don't take anything else home, take that home and meditate on it. Because if you carry that around and keep coming back to that, it's amazing how much you can accomplish if you really, really don't care who gets the credit. Prabhupada didn't care who got the credit. He just wanted to fulfill the order of his spiritual master. And that's the mood that we should be in, especially in our Sankirtan team. It's not me, it's the team. And we just want to see the success of, of, the, of the overall uh, um, service so that it will please our spiritual master. And it, it will you know, be pleasing to the Lord. And that is the essence. We want our taste from developing that uh, intense desire to chant and to, to be able to uh, actually connect with Krishna and not that we want some you know, material fame or adoration from our service. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Shri Prabhupada says that all the uh, credit we get in this world, all the, uh, the praise that we get in this world is artificial. It's all artificial, the praise. Nice. Thank you. Mata. Nice, yeah, let go, let God. That's a good one. Yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, give up being the doer and pray to, to Guru and Krishna for help and direction. Continually pray and ask for help and guidance because it comes from the Lord within the heart and from the spiritual master. Number seven, organize. Measure twice, cut once. Conduct your service like a business rather than like a hobby. Get serious. Set goals. Like we did yesterday, we set some really nice goals for the Sankirtan party and already we feel energized because we know we're, we're going for something. So set goals in your life and for your Sankirtan to, to achieve certain things. Make them um, so that uh, you, can, you can see that you can achieve them but a little bit to reach for. Keep your goals visible. Read them every day. If you keep your goals in front of you, you'll definitely achieve them. If you forget about them and put them in a drawer, you won't reach them. 
So put them up somewhere or carry them with you and read them on a regular basis. Design and write out a clear plan and work from a list. Write down your next steps. If you have a hard task to, to um, take up, then just think, what's the next small step I can take towards achieving it? Define your main areas of focus. Find out what's the most important things that you should be doing to perfect your service. And get the tools that you need for making advancement. Invest in, in those tools. Like, if you need certain things to do your service well, get them. Master the basics of communication. We went over those yesterday, including active listening, customer service, and becoming a master asker. And finally, execute your plan. And this is another motto. I don't mean to sound sententious, but inch by inch, it's a cinch. And it's a good thing to remember, because sometimes some of our tasks in, on the Sankaton service seem overwhelming, but if you just break them down into what's the next inch, just make a little progress, then you can easily do it.